something else that you forgot, right? Let's say, uh, you didn't put G40 in there, you put something else, right? G40 is to turn off the tool of conversation. You're like, oh man, I gotta put in G40, but then I don't wanna change all my numbers after that. So you can just easily come to the end, use that end of block that I told you about, you're gonna have to use that. Type in your code on the screen, and instead of saying, you put 951, type it in, and then insert it in between N50 and N55, right? And you can do that four more times. That's why we need something like that. But you necessarily don't have to follow these exact numbers. However, if you make a mistake and you went in order from one through 10, you're gonna have to change, when you go, when you, when you type, when you change nine two, when you put it because nine three, then three's gotta become four, then four's gotta become five, then five's gotta, so if you do it that way, it's gonna be a hassle. If you do it this way, when you input something, you just have to input it and it's there. Right? Mm -hmm. Make sense? So T stands for what? Well, just a while guess, go ahead. Tool, right? Whatever tool you're working on, it'll be T01, T06, T whatever tool you're gonna use, right? That's what the T stands for, right? On the middle it's T01, on the later it's written T101. Another thing that I'll talk about is this you can tell that each one of these have something written in parentheses. That is for your personal use. Anything you write in parentheses, the computer is not gonna acknowledge it. It's just for you to see it on the screen and say, okay, that's right. M08 is, oh yeah, I gotta turn my cooling on. And that, so you're tracking what it is. And I highly recommend, especially on your points, that you put in parentheses, point A, point B, starting point, exit, whatever it is, so that you know what each line is doing, okay? You can take a guess what that next M is. You got your reference books there if you want to give you guys to them. It has something to do with the tool. So in in the middle, because you won't be able to do it in the lane, in the middle you have to give it that you're gonna have the M06 is gonna come into play, especially when you get further down the PE because you're gonna be changing between I think like four or five four. Right? And I'm, I'm in the minute, I'm, I have them all set up in a, in a rack. I'm going to pull them up so you can see everything you need. So M06 is the same tool. So when you get, so let's say you, your code extended, you ran this, and now you have to do something else. It would be T, what's my next one? T, let's say I, I, I did this with one tool, and I got to change to do something else. So my next one would be T2, T2. 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 And then it will be followed by M06. Tracking? Take exercise like four. The one with drilling. Nope, next one. Yep. Uh, so we started with T01 here, right? Mm -hmm. M06. You see how there's a T here again? Uh -huh. So that means you're, you're trying to change the tool to something, whatever it is. Right? It could be a stop four, so it would be T04. It doesn't have to go in order. As long as, right. as long as you got the right tool and the right slide on the machine. So it'll be T0 whatever, whatever tool you need, and M06. So, so there will be a slots for the tools, and I'm going to put the right tools in the yep. slots? So when, you, start automate, okay. when you go to the machine, it has 10 slots in it. Uh -huh. and you, all you have to do is, if you're confused, you just lay down, and then on top of the slot, it looks like you one, two, three, four, five, it doesn't give you the number. If I put the one in the, whatever tools in the one, that's on the key one, and then whatever two is in the key, yep. two, okay. And then whenever you need to change, you just have to make sure that your tool is in the right slot in the machine. Uh -huh. Now it's going to grab something, something different, and right. you're probably going to, right? So a uh, fraggle for that is the, the, the machine in the, the MWMSS doesn't have a tool changer. Oh, it does not? does not. So we have to manually change the tool every time. You guys remember how to do that? Yeah. 
Oh. Alright, what, 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 what buttons do I use on the machine to see my tool? For the, uh... Oh, it doesn't have it's, it's a It's a physical button. That's a man, yeah. That's a man yep. Oh, for man. the mill. For the mill. Okay. Alright. D54. For D54. Later, right? Huh? Later. Now? I'll try to break it down, but it's going to be, it'll be, it'll be easier once you see that graph and you, and you start plotting points and you understand what the, the difference between absolute and incremental, right? But absolute basically means I'm going to work from a certain point and my computer's going to calculate where I'm going based off of my origin, where I'm starting from. And incremental means I'm going to go from point A to point B, and then I'm going to start seeing from point B where I'm going to point C, and then I'm going to point Instead of going to step by step. Okay, okay, so absolute, you're going off your zero zero for every step. And incremental, you're you're chain, you're going and then you have so to do the calculations this, from if you, you get this location it. wrong, all your other points will be wrong, correct? Yes. Okay. Right, just, just, it just gives you your visual. I'll, I'll show you. Actually. Let's do land nav. Absolute means that the computer's gonna do it's gonna know where I'm starting from and it's gonna know where it's going. Based off of this, all right? So where are you at? Incremental means that if I tell it to go to here to here, then I have to tell the machine how to get from here to here, then I get from here to here, then from here to here, and by step, by step. Make sense? Did I get the right? Is that something special? You got any better explanation? I, I use that land nav example. So, so, so absolute, right? So imagine you're on, you're on your land nav course. Right, and you at the start point, okay, and they give you point A, point B, point C, point D, right? Um, absolute would be um, the instructor telling you, hey, go to point A, point B, point C, point D. I don't care how you do it, just go there, right? But for for uh, incremental G ninety one, the instructor is gonna tell you from from the start point to point A, you have to go. Uh, 50 meters, uh, 90 degree west, or something like that, right? And then from point A to point B, you have to do go, you have to do this many meters, this many degrees. So in incremental, you have to spell it out to go from point to point to point to point. For, for absolute, you're just telling the machine where the points are, right? And the machine is going to calculate by itself how to get there. You understand? Oh, sorry. Much more accurate. Like they're, they're, they're all yeah, they're all accurate. It it just it's just in the schoolhouse to to prevent any like like Sarna Beamus was saying. What if you do incremental and you get one point wrong, all your the rest of your uh, subse subsequent points are gonna be wrong. So to eliminate that, we use uh, absolute. So if you get one point wrong, the rest of your points are still gonna be on you know on on target. So you only get one point wrong instead of all of your points are wrong. Yes. So in yeah, in schoolhouse you will only use absolute, with with a few exceptions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can we tell me, Sarkin, tell me how to how do, how do I uh, what's my encode for a spindle for my RPM? Can you find my code for this one? Reference book. Hmm. 
doing it this way so you guys can get used to getting into the book if you have a computer and they're looking for it, all right? That's your resources. I'm not I'm here to facilitate. You guys are doing it. You guys are doing it. M03. M03, what's M03? What's the uh, spindle on the clock watch? You agree? All right. All right. What's the speed? It'll be S2000. S2000, right? And that's your max. All right, that's not what you're going to be running in. That's your that's your machine max of 2000. You said 1200 is a recommendation, right? What? You said 1200? It depends on the time. Oh, you're going to have to do the calculations. I was just spitting out a number over there so you guys could understand what I was talking about. But there's, there's, on the board, we'll go over the calculations on how to put, how to find the RPM both on the leg and on the middle. Okay. I will move down to like 20. So, rapid. What's my rapid? Do what? For rapid movement. I'm going to concentrate more on this side because I understand that you're... I'm not picking on you, sorry, kid. <laughs> Just making me smart. That's all. It's just keeping your, I like this. I, I want to learn something. So it's a G, zero, zero, zero. How many zeros? And the two zeros. Okay. Yeah. I like how I said one. Zero. Zero. <laughs> That's your rapid move, right? That's yeah. basically, you're not cutting, you're not doing anything. You're just cutting the machine from yeah. here to here. And then you're giving it coordinates. You see how it has a Z right there? That's the coordinate. You're telling it to come down to this point at a rapid move. That's basically it, right? Your H. It's for your heights are your, your T, your H, and your D all have to match. Alright? It's, it's, it's not gonna make sense right now unless I unless I try to go into it. But your H is your height, your D is your depth, and your T is your tool, right? You have several tools, right? So if give me a second. Let me pull out the tool so I got I think I'm pretty better if I Basically, the difference in height of these, right? But when you insert these into the tools, when you tell the machine this tool is this height and you get it wrong, or you don't change, or your Z, your H is 0, 2, right? And your T is 0, 1. You're telling it it's the height of tool 2, but I'm using tool 1. It's not going to match, right? You're going to get an you're get error. It has to match. T, B, and H all have to match because they're all corresponding to the current tool that you're using. It'll make more sense when we go more into depth into the program. Right? But remember, T, D, and H all have to match. And it goes. Because if one tool is 6 inches and the other one is 2, and you're working off the two inch, but you're turning it to depth of the, or, or it's the height of the of, of six or the, the six inch, you're gonna go into my table. All right? Hmm. And when you go into my table, it's a major, it's a logo. We're dragging it, right? Okay. M. An abbreviation, it says cooling on. What's my cooling on? What M code should I use? Uh, M08. Zero eight. In zero eight, what does it say? What's the technical? Just cooling on, say thirty-two. Okay, so M zero eight is to turn my cooling on. Now, on the lay side, when you get to that, a lot of a lot of the codes aren't going to have it. You need to input it somewhere. All right, I'm just going to let you do that. A lot. This, this, uh, this last class that we just had figured a lot of stuff on their own. So I'm going to make you do the same thing. All right. All right, twenty-five. Is the final depth. Z is the coordinate. We're not going to go. We'll, we'll go over that later on. G. What G should I put there? Where's the computer? Does you have the code? What code should I put there? I'm 
one starts with G01. G01 just means you're going to cut something, and then obviously you're going to give it its coordinates. Mm -hmm. Alright? Speed, how do you calculate that for no? Using this? Oh, is it this? Mm -hmm. You see this right here? How do you do the RPM? Is that it? So yep, RPM, RPM yep. Right? So I guess we're going to have to cover this before. Right. The RPM for the lathe, and you don't have to write this down because it's on the board, right? You can always look at it. But you and might want to write it down because you're not going to come from the shop. Come look at it again. Right. And there, there's going to be the bo those boards? Oh, yeah, we do have a yeah. class. You're right. right. The cutting speed, which is already given to you here for the lathe, right? For a roughing cycle, it's going to be 600. For finish, it's 800. So that number replaces. Right here. Times four divided by for the lathe is the diameter of your tool. I mean the diameter of your stop, the piece of cut, which is three inches long, because that's all we use. Three inches by six. Right? So for the lathe it'll be that number times four divided by three. And that's how you'll get your RPM for the lathe. And then you use this calculation for the mill. Alright? RPM times tool times the T number of the length. So basically, if you have four tools, right? The number is what? They're asking for how many keys you have, or how many keys you got in your keys, right? Four. So how many tools? Four. That would be a number, right? And if there's a two tool in here, which the last time is last time, so that number would be? Two. two. N30, sorry, Tim, what is G41? Compensation left of the program test. Color compensation left, right? Yeah. You understand what that means? No. Okay. We spoke about edge finding, right? So when you do your edge finding, we'll go into how exactly how to do the math. But when you're edge finding, you're, you're finding blood on your piece. You need the edge finding. Edge. I mean the, the very the very edge yeah, of the yeah, piece, right? Yeah. You're trying to get down to the to exact to the teeth, right? Uh -huh. So if I have to cut into my piece, what is this? That's it. If I have to cut into my piece, point one two five. G forty one. Once I put it on the information for this tool, G forty one knows exactly how far to bring this piece from the left side in to the right to make my piece cut it to to make that. To get to that number I want you to put one two five. Does that make sense? So it's compensating for this tool for the information you gave it and how much it has to come into my piece to get to where I gotta go. That make sense? So it's not gonna be all the way protected by itself to where it's it's gonna do it. It's gonna, yeah, you don't gotta do no math. As long okay. as you put in all the information right on the tool, okay. on the offsets, it'll you'll get to where you got oh. to with that tool. That makes sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, once they go in the shop and they see the, the tool, the edge finding method, they'll, they'll click. It, 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 a lot of stuff ain't going to make sense until you actually see what, how it's done. Alright. Well, we said that D is what? Uh, what is the same as depth. Yeah. Depth. Depth. Yeah. Depth. 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 So it's got a, this is the title, so 0, 1, because we're using 2, 2, 2, 0, 1. And then the x is 0, and it's just x is wherever you put the 0 at. So you, you're going you're gonna to turn the shape. And then these are your plot points, right? This is where you're going to plot all these, all these points at, right? So we plan to, we'll get to that Monday when we, when we go into the blueprint. But so basically, you're telling the machine, this is point B, this is point C, et cetera, et cetera, right? Well, I gotta get with you because I don't think I'm gonna do your method on skipping the G01s 
Yeah, that's fine. Option. Monday, we're going to go over this right here. All right. 